These bike riders are extremely alert. They're always uh, looking up ahead of them uh, as far as they can to see whether or not there's going to be any danger in the road. The high road, Columbia High Road, picking up the pace. This is the place where you certainly don't want to be now because in the next few kilometres you won't be able to move up to the front end of the main field. We've uh, cranked the speed up from what was uh, a little while ago, only 35 to 40 kilometres an hour to now an average speed of probably closer to uh, just inside of 50, slowed down a fraction because of these winds are buffeting the riders. It's not the Mistral that they're uh, facing up to here this afternoon. It's the wind, uh, the crosswind in this part of the world known as the Tramontana. They really are putting uh, their backs into this fill, and that's going to be... There's a little bit of chaos going to come at the back, and uh, I would say if I was riding in about 15th to 20th position here, I would want to open up a second echelon. See the split fall right behind? This is a crucial change of direction this time. It, it was the UK flag that was fine, the uh, Union Jack ripping across the course that indicated they just turned into a crosswind, and now the team time trial has arrived a day early. This is Team Columbia HTC. They realise they've got a split, and now you see the dangers because Cancellara was ready. He's up here. I uh, knew this was going to happen uh, in these crosswinds, and you see already this Look is, the, echelon this is the, bottom. the echelons. They're a diagonal line of riders and trying to shelter from the wind in a diagonal line across the road. And having a team like Team Columbia High Road HTC at the front doing that, they will not hold anything back at all. I would guess, Phil, that they've got all nine oh, riders oh. here. Armstrong is in this split. Hink Cappy is the man who's realised what they've got. I think it's a little bit of a shame. We've just swept around the corner. The wind will reduce its pressure from across the course, and it might cause the gap to close down a little bit. But they are now taking benefit from this, and Cavendish is in there. But this is now not a race for Cavendish. This is a race for certain riders to gain real time over the field. We've now got two races on the road to La Grande Motte. I'm amazed that Armstrong had the nous not to miss that split, but one man, it appears to me, has missed the split from Team Astana, and I'm looking for number 21 to see if he's there now. They should have been looking after him. They should have been looking after Alberto Contador. Three or four riders there from Team Skill, but this is a big split, and there will be serious alarm bells, Phil, ringing behind. Well, I'd like the cameras to pull back now and see what damage is being done because I think that Alberto Contador has missed the move here. Cancellara was ready for it. He was right at the front. Now, it takes a strong rider as well to stay in the front, but if you are fancying your chances, you would have known, because we've talked about it all day, that the winds down this way rips the field apart. This is an excellent race again. Well, because of the split, Paul, there are the four riders underneath the American flag who, I'm afraid, have been shot down in flames by a peloton which is racing for real time now. By the time the select group of 27 hit the run into La Grande Motte, their lead was over half a minute on the main field. At 4.7 kilometres, the clock is still counting at the 5-kilometre banner for the chase here, and it's going to be about 33, 34 seconds... But Paul Astana, with three men in the breakaway, are still going to head up the team race in the lead tonight because you work out the team by adding together the best three riders finishing times of the day. I think what's more important to them is the fact that they're moving Lance Armstrong up in the overall classification, but really the most sensible move was the move done by Team Columbia High Road. They really did bring a coup on here this afternoon. They're not going to slow down either because they now realise they've got to keep this pressure on all the way to the finish. I sincerely believe as we go inside of four kilometres to go that the peloton were going to react violently and pull these men back. It's just an oh. indication of the fact that there's eight riders from one team in this breakaway and I think that adds to the success we are four minutes from the finishing line in La Grande Motte it's a headwind a long straight up to the finish but there's no way in that four minutes can the field behind there's Tom Bone in the black yellow and red jersey champion of Belgium another day he's missed out in the sprint here because he missed out in the split and more importantly big riders missed out in the split Sastra Contador Cadell Evans all missed a move. They're handing time to Lance Armstrong, to Michael Rogers, 
the important riders and to Kim Kirkham particularly. And look at the back now, they're just being torn to shreds by the wind. They're at a four kilometres. We're going to have five bunches finished today. Well, that's the important thing you have to remember. I've said it so many times that a flat stage can always be a dangerous stage because you don't have to go uphill to split a field. If you get a very strong crosswind, it can split the field to pieces. And that's what's happened here this afternoon. We have split it up in the crosswinds. That's why the riders uh, were riding at the front end of the main field, taking lots of risks to make sure that they were in the first 15 or 20 positions. Alberto Contador has been caught out, but he's been caught out by his own teammate, Lance Armstrong. But let's not forget, Phil, the Tour de France is three weeks long. But this is oh, the yes. first psychological battle, and things can completely and utterly change once we get into the mountains. But this has been fun to watch. Contador is a great mountain climber, but maybe he lacks a little bit of experience, a little bit of experience to ride these crosswinds it's not his favorite style of bike racing but those riders who can ride them know you can gain time he was squeezing out seconds in a race that's still got two and a half plus weeks to go but you never know remember Greg LeMond and Laurent Fignon Greg LeMond won by eight seconds and these boys at the moment have got themselves 34 34 seconds is what the clock will stop at if we were to stop the race right now but we've still got a couple of kilometers to go to the finish Still, everybody seems to be participating in the pacemaking at the front end of the pack. Mark Cavendish now is starting to get nervous. He realises he has to finish off after the job of work that's been done by his team, Team Columbia, High Road, HT, HTC. They've done a great job of work for him, but he's got the pressure on his shoulders to make sure he finishes it off. And don't forget, there is a still a very good sprinter in this group. Tor Hushoff, the God of Thunder, is there, and he will be hoping to take advantage of a mistake by Mark Cavendish. Well, in theory... It's only Hushoft who can even approach the speed of Mark Cavendish. But we've had two races for the last 20k, and these guys are going to be at the full limit of their effort right now. Whether Mark can lift it again, and he's got to come late to the line because he'll put his nose out, the wind is going to come from the left of the road, and on his head as he makes the line, he's got to get it right. Don't discount Fabian Cancellara. He's got yep, in this race, he's had an easy out. ride, You're right. You're he's right. a strong bike rider, and if it's a sprint that goes out from a very long way, he could be the man to create the big surprise here this afternoon. Let's not forget the last time he was leading the Tour de France in the yellow jersey on the road into Compiègne, he came round a zigzag corner, and all of a sudden the yellow jersey bolted out of a bunch sprint to get himself a great stage victory. He doesn't have to win, of course, to keep his maillot jaune tonight. He just needs to finish with these riders. He'll be given the same time. No time bonuses given in the race this year, so he finishes with the riders. He keeps his maillot jaune. But second tonight, I think, will be Tony Martin. Third tonight, I think, will be Lance Armstrong. Tomorrow, it's the team time trial. Then what will happen? It looks like we're in one kilometre to go now. Skill Shimano won't go down without a fight as well. Cavendish has moved himself right up now. He's not got a lot of riders here, and there's an attack on right on the far side of the road. And I think that'll be probably Christoph Kern or Stefan Auger who's made the move as they try to bridge the gap here to the one skill Shimano. This is going to be a tough one. Mark Redshaw, you've got to do something special here. Where are you, Mark? I'm right behind you. As they come up towards the finish, he's got to hold him late and then launch the attack because the headwind will spoil the fun. Mark has got to do something very special here and stay there as long as possible because Cholling is getting up on his back wheel as well here. And Tor Hushup is locked in onto the back of the missile. I think that Cavendish knows it. Now he's got to go up the left-hand side. Tor Hushup, can he use his massive strength to challenge Cavendish? It's going to be close, but I think Cav has done it. Yes, he's done it on the telephone. Mark Cavendish is unbelievable, and Tor Hushoff got second. Two out of two, another 35 points on the green jersey competition. It's already looking pretty good. It's looking extremely good. That was a handbook victory for Mark Cavendish there, Phil, as he came up to the line. But this is what's more important, I think, to everybody else. The time gap that the clock is going to stop at here. Roman Felu is coming up to get himself uh, probably a 29th or 30th place. Stops the clock Ooh. at 39 seconds. Huge loss on a day like this. It's going to make the team time trial a battle for yellow now tomorrow. Will Fabian Cancellara.